It's a great pleasure to welcome the European Compliance and Ethics Community to the ECEC 2022. While the topics at the ECEC have proven far-reaching and diverse over the years, compliance and ethics have always been the beating heart of our community. This year, the central theme of our conference is whether we are living in a world forced to be good. While trust acts as the cornerstone of a good and honest world, it is also important to examine the role played by integrity and resilience and whether they should be leveraged more. To be clear, we have taken on enormous debt that we must pay back. Debt to the environment and to society. Nobody likes paying off debt. This requires insight and pressure, and it means we need both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation to make the world a better place. Let's start with intrinsic motivation. One of my favorite principles is have integrity and demand it from others. I've always been a passionate advocate for the right values and a healthy corporate culture where transparency and integrity are utilized to create the most important corporate capital, trust. It is one of the most powerful assets available to businesses today, holding relationships together, lowering risk, boosting brand power, and building long-lasting reputations. However, I'm also a strong believer in regulation. Regulatory requirements can protect the environment, workers, and consumers while simultaneously boosting innovation, productivity, and value. New green regulations, particularly in Europe, are introducing strict reporting standards to create common baselines for disclosures across industries that will hold companies accountable if they fail to turn their net zero pledges into consistent results. Imminent global ESG standards will be instrumental to put an end to a lack of environmental accountability. While many large companies already set goals for sustainability and publish ESG data, a lack of regulation and scrutiny has allowed some organizations to appear more proactive than they are in reality. We've seen what the use of sustainability labels, certifications and services as a marketing tactic can lead to. Deceptive greenwashing. So while some companies are intrinsically motivated to act and behave as role models by embracing the right values based on strong corporate culture, others have their good behavior driven by regulations. However, more factors are at play and forces are converging to push companies. Alongside political willpower, external and internal stakeholders are having a huge influence on companies today. Whether it's fighting climate change, upholding human rights, or protecting whistleblowers, corporate boards and leaders are under tremendous pressure to prove they are well equipped, equipped to pursue sustainable strategies. Otherwise, they will be out of business sooner or later. Let's look at the developments since last year's ECEC. Unfortunately, there have been a number of negative developments around the world since last year. The war against Ukraine, energy crisis, the collapse of global supply chains, and the rampant inflation. In a period of profound uncertainty, many companies are staying cautious with their budgets and avoiding any commitments they deem unnecessary, such as a cultural overhaul, or a new environmental approach. On the other hand, in our experience at EQS Group, intrinsic motivation has increased in many organizations. High-profile companies are jumping on the environmental bandwagon since the start of this year. Companies like Aston Martin, Budweiser, Patagonia, Mars or Volkswagen were announcing ambitious targets and social initiatives. For example, just last month, Samsung announced a plan to tackle climate change by achieving enterprise-wide net zero carbon emissions using more renewable energy and investing in new technologies. And according to Bloomberg, 
More than 41 trillion US dollars will flow into ESG investing this year. With regards to regulation, we've all been disappointed by the pace of the rollout of the EU whistleblowing directive across Europe since last year's ECEC. Only one company met the deadline, only one country, sorry, met the deadline, and that's Denmark. However, so far in 2022, the law has been adopted in 10 member states, including France, and with the German transposition imminent, noticeable progress is now finally being made. By the end of this year, whistleblowers in Europe will be much better protected and companies will minimize their risk for misconduct. On a brighter note, I welcome the growing attention paid to global supply chains. In Germany, the corporate due diligence obligations in supply chains lays out clear guidance and legal certainty for companies on how to respect human rights. And in February, the European Commission also presented a proposal for a law on corporate sustainability obligations, the so-called EU supply chain law. This will require companies to identify and, where necessary, prevent or mitigate the adverse impacts of their activities on human rights, such as child labor, work exploitation or biodiversity loss. So my conclusion, I firmly believe in the importance of regulation in driving companies to do good. Given soaring environmental and social awareness, however, companies are also taking action regardless, either due to stakeholder pressure or because of their own foresight and good intentions. Author Douglas B. Reeves remarked, sustainable change, after all, depends not upon compliance with external mandates or blind, and blind adherence, adherence to regulation, but rather upon the pursuit of the greater good. However, we have to ask ourselves, with the clock ticking, are external mandates now essential to force companies to act for the sake of humanity and the planet? Does the world need to be forced to be good? Let's discuss the latest developments at this year's ECEC. Be inspired by the many top-class keynotes, breakout sessions and the compliance pioneers of the ECEC award. Let's all promote transparency and integrity to create trust. And let's lead an ethical revolution. I wish you an exciting and successful ECEC 2022. Ahim, thank you so much for your opening speech and also for your personal insights. Now, fantastic. The ECEC is in its third year, the third edition. How do you feel about that? Totally excited about it. Uh, we set new records. Um, we have more than 7,000 attendees. I think last year we had around, around 5,000 many high-class speakers. Um, I think it's, it's uh, just fantastic how many people come together, take initiative to make the world a better place. Very inspiring indeed. So what part of the conference are you particularly looking forward to? I don't know. I think uh, we have the full package. We have uh, fantastic keynotes. We have uh, breakout sessions, masterclasses and the ECEC award. So I think there should be something for everybody. Okay, great. So the previous two years you had the ECEC. How does 2022 compare with the previous two years? I think um, we have the best of everything. We, we kept compliance and ethics at the heart of our mission, but on the other hand, we expanded into ESG, which is, of course, the hot topic in our industry. Um, so, yeah, great development for the ECEC, and with the high number of attendees, it shows that we are on the right path. Speaking of ESG and sustainability, the EQS group itself has taken really important steps towards increased sustainability. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, that's true. We published our first ESG report last year, the Sustainability Report 2021, um, with great highlights. I'm very proud of our very low carbon footprint, less than one ton per employee per year. But also we figured out that there are many areas to improve. Um, gender diversity, which is a topic in the whole IT industry, um, equality, 
Um, but in general, I think we are on a great path to become a very sustainable company at EQS Group. Okay, wonderful. So I wish you every success again this year with the conference and I'm looking forward to having you tomorrow on the panel to discuss the theme of the conference, Are We Living in a World Forced to Be Good? So see you again tomorrow. Ahim. Thank you so much, Sonia, and thank you so much for being our wonderful MC of the ECEC for the third year. It's That's really fantastic. Thank you. It's absolutely my pleasure, Ahim. Thanks. Bye. So as Ahim mentioned in his opening speech, ESG investing may surpass $41 trillion by the end of this year. And our first keynote speaker today has spent most of his career focused on responsible investment. So he's the perfect person to kick off our sustainability topic. Let's take a closer look at our first speaker of the day.